Hello again, Explain Pilots. This is Herka Jerk, and today I'm going to be uh, doing a demonstration of um, a coupled ILS on um, the Baron uh, 58 default aircraft with the Explain uh, GPS 530, which is uh, similar to the Garmin um, GNS 530. Uh, and we're going to be operating today at Portland International Jet Port in uh, it's Portland, Maine. Uh, currently, we're set up uh, to take off runway uh, 29. We're going to take off runway 29 and then uh, proceed to Buxtow, fly a parallel holding a lieu of procedure turn, and then come back around for the ILS to runway 11. So, this should be a fairly short video. I'm just going to focus on showing you the automation um, and how to switch between the GPS and the uh, NAV1 and or NAV2 if you need to uh, use that. Uh, for the flight plan today I've just got the approach the ILS runway 11 loaded. Um, desired track to the hold will be uh, 290. I've got it set in the um, window for my CDI and I have uh, GPS selected as my source for that CDI. As a backup I've also got the ILS loaded in NAV2 and I'm listening to the uh, dots and dashes on um, NAV2 as well uh, and we'll see that um, deviate when we take off uh, and we probably won't see this deviate because this is the GPS uh, source here. So let's go ahead and take off and um, do our checklist and then we'll uh, probably speed some of this up um, once we get to the hold and I'll talk through um, how to set up the uh, transition between GPS and um, raw nav aids. So initially for my flight director uh, I'm just going to put in a heading and I'm not going to set an altitude. Um, yaw damper is off, flaps are up. Uh, standard for the, the Baron aircraft. So here we go. Alright, gear up. And we're going to climb up to uh, 2,300 feet today. Should be a fairly short climb. Alright, we're going to engage the nav mode for the flight director, so I'll get course guidance right here to my first fix and landing and taxi lights are off and I'll go ahead and throw the autopilot on now so I need to tell it to keep climbing it's not a very smart autopilot but that's functional and it automatically turned on my yaw damper as well. When I get to 2,300 feet, I'll just hit the altitude button and it should level me off. All right, should be a good altitude capture. Cool, so we have entered holding, um, holding a lieu of procedure turn here. Uh, should just go outbound for one minute because that's what's uh, depicted on the plate. Um, then it'll turn me back inbound. Oh, I'll watch my speed. All right, and when I turn back around, I'll check my uh, inbound course, 110. I'll set that in the, in the window on my um, HSI. Sweet, so that's all set up, and it's going to fly an intercept heading. Set my heading bug here so I can keep track of it. 
cool. So this is really what I want to show you guys. Um, let me slow down. All right. So what I'm going to do is go to heading mode real quick just to hold this heading. All right. It's holding the heading. Uh, sweet. And then I'm going to go to nav 1. I can even go to nav 2 if I want it. But um, I'm going to keep it on nav 1. Uh, and now I've got a good CDI deflection letting me know I'm on a good intercept heading to intercept the um, localizer inbound. So I'm heading this way and I need to intercept the localizer inbound, 110. Um, at this point I'm going to go ahead and engage the uh, nav portion for the localizer. And I should see case break here and it appears that uh, the localizer is coming across. And what's going to happen is it's going to go ahead and turn to intercept and I know when I'm at um, 10.6 DME uh, have a good um, readout here uh, for my DME that I'm established inbound so 10.6 DME and I'm established in the course I can go down to um, 1800 feet so I'll go ahead and set that uh, command to descent on the um, autopilot here it's not very precise, but I can set it, pull the power back a little bit. And uh, about three miles from the final port tracks, let's go ahead and get the gear down, make sure I'm nice and slow. All right, when I get to 1800 feet, I'm going to um, Go ahead and level off because that's my uh, final approach fix altitude or glide slope intercept altitude. Now I'm just going to wait for the uh, glide slope to come down. Sweet, gears down, flaps are coming all the way down, and I'm just waiting on the glide slope. And I should see it twice here on the nav 2 and here on the nav 1. Yeah, a little bit high, that's okay. It's just a, um, at or above altitude, so. All right, so I want to go ahead and uh, make sure I hit approach mode to make sure that the aircraft knows we're flying um, an ILS, not a localizer. So that's what I just did. Um, so now that I've hit that, I'm waiting on the glide slope to come down and I should intercept it. Okay, it did capture the glide slope. So that's cool. If I don't want to accelerate, I'll pull the power back just a little bit. We are established. Uh, on final, gear down, flaps down, uh, six miles to go, and uh, that dumb and happy, find the approach. You can see the field uh, in the distance. Too red, too white, right on glide slope. So um, the automation does work. Um, you can fly this all the way down till mins, uh, and you can even go to nav 2 and set up the autopilot and it should fly just fine just for um, fun. We'll try that here. Okay, so now it's flying off this source and this um, VHF control head and it's doing just fine. Obviously if we go to uh, GPS it's not going to be happy. And if we go back to NAV2 we'll just have to um, reset that. So when I hit the approach mode it um, lights up the NAV and the glide slope so that's what we want. Again, I'm flying off nav 2. Fly off nav 1, it won't change anything. So. Alright, um, that's all I had to show you guys for today. Uh, fairly simple to set up, but um, just have to do things in the uh, correct order. Alright, thanks for watching. See you next time.